Better already. 12 o'clock, guys. I'm ready. You ready to move on? Just going to get my uh, equipment ready. So, you need pen, paper, um, pencil if you wish, and any drawing implements that you like, or any painting implements that you like. Uh, I'm not going to be descriptive on, on that, on descriptive, sorry, on that. That's entirely up to you and what you choose to do. Um, so, one, well, I'm going to just be there in a minute. You need a scrap piece of paper as well, please. Okay. Okay, okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, how are you? Hope you're all well. Um, I've got a piece of scrap paper. This is my doodle from the other day. I've got my book, which is not all of them, but Mindful 101, which is just Tamara. Hello, my love. Are you uh, busy? Building. So yeah, looking really cool. Well done, you. So, oh, what am I? Oh, boom. You know when you sort of sit on something, you think that's not right. Well, I just did that. So a bit concerned. We haven't got enough light. Oh, do you know it's so weird here eh? because I've just had to put on another cardi. And for those people that don't know what a cardi is, <laughs> it's a cardigan. Okay, so, you know, like a, a, a cardigan because I'm cold. And um, the sun's come out and it's blooming boiling now. So I'm like, you know, you know, taking it on, putting it off, taking it off, putting it on. So I'm not using that because I don't want to waste it. So what I've done is, I've got a sheet of paper similar to this and I've decided to cut it in the shape that I want. I've got four out of one sheet. So that, I'm really concerned now, it's strobing. Oh, for crying out, bloody loud. Right, the switch we show tomorrow. So I've got an awkward archer one at, 10 at nine o'clock tomorrow, which is quite strange because I'm like, I don't even know what day it is now because I keep changing my shows, but it's because of this big bolt, I think, that's a bit stuck. It's got a bit of a, a bit stuck in the sewers. When someone told me that, I really thought it was a, someone, you know what I mean, stuck. I bought a little kiddie's bolt in the sewers, not the sewers canal, but sewers, S-E-W-E-R. I 
I'm not being rude, but I'm going to have to open this door. And guess what? The man at Gardeners are back. They did it this morning about eight o'clock. I was, I, I nearly got, I was really bad this morning, so I thought I'll lie in. I don't let ever lie in, never. And then it started up again about 20 minutes ago, so I'm like, oh my God, they're in, they're in again. I'm going to go bananas. So I just thought, no, it's out of my control, just ignore it. So I'm opening the door. As soon as that stupid stripper, well, strimmer starts, I'm going to jump up and shut the door. Right, hello, Liz. Hello, Chell. Hi Louise. Hi Tamara. Hi Louise. Hi Linda. Hi Sarah. Sarah. Emma. Philippa. Sally. Louise. Sarah. Windy and wet in Ireland. Hi Linda. Hi Kelly. Hi Kim. Are you having a break to watch me? Oh. Are you be able to catch? tag along with us and make your own mandala soon so Sue Kath Susan Val Sue yeah it must be so good now that you're able to sort of you're on the own stretch now nothing better than when you sort of just stretching your top because it feels like it's a bit too hot clinger um, there's nothing better is there when you've decided that you know, it's time to, like, redo something or clean it or paint it or anything like that. I mean, decor-wise. And there's, you know, you can go through the cleaning, soaping, sanding, drying down and all that. Or you can just paint over it. All depends on what you're up to. Right. I'm just having to shut this door because the curtain... Is on its way out of the door. It's a big long curtain, so it's like waggling around like like the Union Jack outside the door. Or the Union flag, I should say, not the Union Jack. Oh, hey, good one. Hello, Tracer. Um Hello Malcolm. Oh, you've got yourself a light and camera. Oh, hang on, hang on. Quick. I knew there was some it. I knew it. I can't let you run out of charge. Do you know what I, I did today? I'm normally very good with me admin. I normally sort of make sure that any emails or messages I get, I tend to sort of reply straight away. Or I try to make sure that if I can't answer it then, that they get a notification. Well, important emails, I was sort of in the middle of doing and then I got drafted they got dra put on draft and next minute I'm like why have not got these done why have I not done that why have I not done that I'm getting emails saying why haven't you replied and I'm like I have and then you go into your um, you go into your drafts and they're all there so a bit of a panic morning I'm thinking why aren't people why aren't people um, why aren't people coming into uh, responded to me and it's because I'm not responding to them oh that's good I hope things go better Sophia um, and Susan's just tried to get in oh is it rainy in Sweden what time is it in Sweden at the moment is it the same time as us we're noon 12 o'clock we changed our clocks again, so we never know what time it is. Anyway, enough of that. How are you all? I had a day off yesterday, spent the entire day working. It got to five o'clock and I thought, I've really had enough. But I've got loads of admin done. Horrible in Loch Lomond. Beautiful place. Uh, right, okay. First of all, I really enjoyed the other day and I thought I'd speak a little bit more about... I don't know what I'm doing that with my hands for. It doesn't mean anything. I'll speak a little bit more about abstraction because um, you don't have to do this. You could do one of these really big, but I really think um, 
I think it was Emma who came up with the I've got paint all over my top came up with one solution where she didn't like it she cut it up but that's a really good uh, right in London right so that, that you know that's one way of dealing with it is cutting it up but there's other ways uh, it's so you're still an hour ahead right okay um, and it's a dotty notepad because it's good for drawing on you don't have to have a dotty notepad at all a lined one's fine Yorkshire strong breeze in Yorkshire there's a bit of a breeze here as well so got a ruler now when you're dealing with um when you're dealing with what you call it, the shapes of abstracts, um, what you can do is just, you can actually just make it, it really simple and easier by doing an abstract shape or a really simple square or circle. And the reason for that is because you can mosaic it then. So if you decide that you don't want to do, um, a sort of traditional shape then you you make your abstracts fit that so just one minute while I get everything sorted and then I'm back on track I'm just trying to hope you can hear you can't can you hear what's going on out there I think there's a blooming dog fight all happens here isn't he I can't they all just go back to sleep and let me oh sorry go back to sleep and let me just get on in filming right okay so so we've got a, a shape that we want so I'll just draw it on it uh, it's easier with obviously dots because you can make it square rectangle any shape you want uh, if you haven't got dots don't worry what you can do is just draw any shape you want so you look at the shapes you want that's a bit dodgy you know and, and you're sort of looking at those shapes so it's entirely up to you um, you can use a stencil as well we're not going to go into a stencil work today because I think that's a little bit too too much at the moment but you can do you can work with a stencil in the same way so what I'm going to do is just draw my square or whatever shape that's a little bit too close you need it further away so that you've got so make a couple of stencils. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm just going to do uh, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, a five by five dot square like that. The next one is down here. I'm going to do a one, two, three, four, five. That's a six dot. One, two, three, four, five six dot right okay so these are going to be our little so this one is two dots by however it doesn't have to be perfect you can even do that all right so the way to do this is I'm just going to cut fold each one in half generally in half and then just go snip snip fold it over snip it off if you've got a knife do it with a knife yep so you've got a general so where you can try and fold your dots in half so well or your squares in half so you, you only have to cut once like that and the other answer is if you only want if you want it square you just draw one half fold it in half and draw that half if that makes sense so by that I mean it's quite simple all I do is I look at that half I just cut that half not trying to make that you know put it in the center that's just one way so I'm gonna do this that's a bit off but there's nothing to stop you going back in with your scissors if you've got a scalpel go with your scalpel this will not have any real sort of impact on your work if you want to 
do it more precise. We used to do this out of mount boarding skill and we used to keep them so that we could sort of see where uh, each child was at, was using the same size. Um, because if we didn't, and they just cut willy-nilly. Well, we did in year 11, we cut willy-nilly because they were able to do that, but the younger ones wouldn't. So they'd need to make, and, and they used to get upset if they didn't get the same right, which is right, of course it's right. So we used to make them all the same. And then as they got older, when we're doing abstraction, it was easier to just let them cut their own out. But we still use graph paper because it just seemed the easiest way to do it without having to, because you start having to sort of cut, measure, cut, measure with a class of 30, 15 year olds. That'll be a whole lesson and what have they learned? <laughs> Not a lot. So I've got my squares and I've got my template. You can have whatever shape you want. If you want to do it with circles, that's cool. Do it with a circle. If you're doing circles, your best idea is to get that and maybe a pot I just draw half, I'll just show you now it's a bit easier like that and then cut that and then each time you want a new circle see it's not quite round but it's alright it'll do the job but you know if you want to do it like that you can um, if you want to do freelance, freelance, <laughs> um, free form, you've got different shapes. You've got like a pear shape there, which is quite a nice elliptical shape. So what it's entirely up to you what you do, okay? So now I've made a complete kibosh of all this here. I'll get my little lines out. And these are always good to keep because they're good for shading later. If I wanted to fill the inside of that with a pattern, when I've taken the pattern off, put that back on the pattern and then blend out with some oil pastels and stuff. I'll have a really cool blending tool there, template. So keep these if you want, bin them if you don't. Um, there's another bit, this is off the, the side of my paper and I've been keeping these because these are really good for collage, but not just collage, they're good for, um, where have I put them here? They're good for drawing round if you want to isolate areas as well. You know, you wanted to do three circles. Um, you could do them with your punch and all that. So there's mine, all cut, ready. What's that on there for? Get away. How are we doing? Oh, great. I'm glad. Right, I'll, I'll get that. Thank you. Hello, Melissa. Hi Caroline, hi Sue, so hi Thelma, Rizwana, hello, um, so yeah you can do whatever shape you want, you just need to garner the ideas of what you want to do and how you're doing it. So the next thing is I've got my cut up paper, um, now this it's cut this size because I didn't want to waste, so its majority is a six, seven. Um, but if you wanted to cut that in half again, no problem with that. Or if you wanted to make that into a square, absolutely no problem with that. I tend to sort of look at this and go, you know, you could use my, I tend to use templates that are around me rather than measure because it's easier and I could use that. But then you're falling into the realms of the same, very similar to, um, CZT and I don't want to do that um, I want to sort of do my bit but you know obviously all Moodles are connected in some way because of the form of what you do and how you're doing it but the actual method is different so I, I don't tend to stay, try to sort of do smaller ones I try to make them a bit bigger because my shapes are bigger so I've got quite a few I'm not going to do all these believe it <laughs> so you know and I keep them there um, we're going to do something in May where it's going to moodle a day, keeps the doctor away, which will be, you know, maybe that into at four. So it'll be, I don't know, there's a way of working it out. Let me try and figure it out for you. There is loads of way of doing it, but I like to have it in my head. Where's my bit of paper? Here it is. So it's A4. 
So that's A5, that's A, that's 5, that's 6, that's 7, that's 8, that's 9, and that's 10. You get me? That makes sense? So I'll do it again. So half of that, right, if, if that's A3, then that would be an A4. Half of that is an A5. Half of that is an A6. Half of that is an A7. Half of that is an A8. Half of that is an A9. Half of that is an A10. And if you go the other way, so this is A3. So that would be half of an A2. And then two of the two A2s equals an A1. And then two times A1 equals A0. And that's what we found. Get it? Does that help? No, probably not. But you get the idea. Right, the bigger the number, the smaller the sheet. I don't know what genius threw that out because you'd think it was the other way around. So I've got my sheets here and I'm going to look for some of my favourite pieces in my book. And we're going to go, what we did today, which is abstraction or subtraction, subtraction. And that basically is abstraction is to take away an area or subtract an area from the main image. And um, sort of do it large. So you look for areas that you like. Um, you know things that you think oh I quite like that I like that but remember you've got to recreate that in a space so you know have a look through what you like um, quite like that because I think that one would look nice it doesn't have to be full um, it doesn't have to be full at all I quite like that one there see that's a really nice one let me just move all that up can you see so you could choose your pattern isolate your pattern see which patterns you like and then from there isolate excuse me and then just drop so you know it's really quick really easy uh, this one's a little bit more difficult to do because there's that many patterns in it but you could go for that. If I was doing it on my own, I probably maybe would. You know, and don't forget to turn your page because if if that's representing your page square, then if you do that and keep yours straight and, and move that, that would be what you'd see in your window or that. So that would be the top. So don't forget you can move your paper. Um, if you wish you can have a bit of everything on it if you wish like that and then this one would be a slice more like a slice so you'd look at smaller detail with this one because if you just pass that over that unless that's what you want you've only got two or three lines Do you get me so look at the work you've got if not you can just follow along with what I'm doing and copy what I do I'm going to um, let me see now Now, if you're going from a square to an oblong, it doesn't really matter as long as you sort of say that is now that shape. I know it looks different, but it just elongates everything. So anything that falls, let me show you here, right? Anything that falls in the middle there would fall in the middle there. Anything that sort of occupies a middle space would be, even though these sides are slightly bigger. So it doesn't matter that that is a different shape to that. You just rectify it if you don't want to do it like that um, the best way is to cut your paper the same shape as this and the way to do that is to just do it in half again just make it one more longer and it's now a rectangle which is that shape do you get me so there's lots of it's easy to sort it out so if it's more practical that that 
shape and that shape correspond that's fine if you're quite all right with the fact that you're using a big a little square and really making it into a big rectangle that's even cool so it's a tally up to you how pas uh, passionate no not passionate how confident you are okay so i'm just going to go why is that so far out bear with me guys i want to bring it in a little bit more there we go right okay so i've got my paper ready i've got my pencil i've got my template you can do the same with that if you wish okay um you can do so if you've got a circle and you don't like the circle just drop your square over and you can have that shape you see now um so you can change anything you want if you wanted to put that long one there and have it over that and in and out on top of each other around the bend uh, you know just like little bits out of your circles so you've got like that shape so so tell it to you so how confident you feel using it so got my paper got my pen I've uh, got a pencil I've got a um mechanical pencil i've got my circle doodads oops sorry i'm just trying to find out what's going on right okay Uh, I just had a picture sent to me, so I'm not too sure why of me doing this. Hmm, that's a bit strange. Um, yeah, me circle drawer, me orbis. I've got me compass, so I've got. I'm, I'm all geared up now. I'm all geared up. So now I'm going to move areas over, so I can see. So the thing is, I'm going to have to draw on the paper because if you're going to sort of see where I'm drawing, you're going to need to see where and what actually I am drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just look for something a little bit interesting. So I'll go back to these, quite like these. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. I'm going to go with that one first. So if you've got some self-adhesive tape, of course it's all self-adhesive removable tape then go for that as well um so this is that way do you get me okay so all you do is your corresponding doofers go together and by doofers that's a technical term a doofer is a technical term for equipment okay now the first thing i'm going to measure out is i'm looking at that now putting that there i like that there so i look at that and i put all the lines there where things meet that's there and that's there okay so the first thing i'm going to do is draw i'm going to draw this that comes all the way over like that and then a little bit more like that and that one goes not quite to the top bit there like that and this one it's about that far away from there which is about right then I've got another circle in here She's got big dots in it so it goes like that okay so it doesn't look quite right now but it will do once we put now what you can do from this is change it slightly so if there's stuff on here that you really don't like then that's cool because all you have to do is just um, make 
the changes because you can change this from one into another shape so you can sort of artistic license so I'm just changing it now what I will do now is go straight in with my pen now I'm, I'm worried that oh I can't believe me a new pen out didn't I because I've run out of pens I'm going to use an 11 on no that's too way too thick isn't it Where's the pen? I ran out I've had to use my new drawing ones which I'm going to use a number two to tend to keep for drawing my stamps because it's easier for Angela to sort of clean them up because I'm not a very good draw, uh, clean drawer. So I'm just going to go with first line. If you find, like me, that you might, like there, can you see? Then just put a piece of paper underneath and then you can come straight off and you're not making jaggedy lines. So I'm just going to move that away. Now what you can do, another way of doing this, is to create um, pictures on your phone and then enlarge them. And this allows you to change them as you want to. So here I've got, just looking at that now, I'm trying to make the relationship sort of smoother so can you see this relationship to this line isn't working for me so i need to sort of go that's better now yeah if i rub out that one can you see the relationship is better than it was um and then i look at this again and i've made a bit of a change here which is cool doesn't matter to me so if you started to lose oh, there we go so if you're starting to lose some of the pattern don't worry because that's what it's about so on here artistic license means you can just bang in another one okay like that and then I'm going to put in some wobbly lines there that match this it's not as perfect as the other one not that that's perfect but um, okay now it's got a lot of these here so I think the best bet is for me to just go for it So I've got these little dots on here now. And all I'm doing is changing up what I've got on my original drawing and just add in things that I might think that just just add a bit of, a bit of difference to it so I'm just going to rub out some of the lines because some of these lines now are getting a bit too messy for me so I think I might have to turn my phone off It's annoying me, so if it's annoying me, it'll be annoying you as well. It's my own fault, because normally I just turn everything off, you know, when it comes to a, a live. I don't have it on, but I forgot to do it. Normally I have it on aeroplane like we do at the studio, because people do forget them on. You know, and they just think, oh, I'll give Lou a quick ring, or oh, I'll just say this, oh, I've got to show that. And your next minute, you're like, and they, they you know, they don't mean it, but it, it is annoying. It's really annoying. I tried to put do not disturb on my phone, but that don't work either. So, 
you know I'll just give up so we've got some lines here that I'm going to fill in and I quite like this one and this one's just I finished the sizes in my new um, Frida's Frida's Flowers Blanket by Janie Crow um, and since I sent that to Tamara and then the other one to my other friend as a preser I've not been able to pick up my, my um, grocery. Hang on, excuse me. Hi, cheers, thank you. Bye now. You can run away, you can't sit in there. Oh, lovely double A. Lovely double A. Oh, great. That's for my show tomorrow morning. Right, okay, you don't run away from me now. Oh, we've dropped down to 10. We dropped down 10 already, blooming it. Must be boring. So, I've got the main body of that, some little details. I'm going to go for another one. So, going to get this maybe here. Let's look for somewhere else a bit more. See, I like these here. I like this this distance here, this square thing. Oblong. And working this way. So I'm going to do this. So if you could just see that. Blow me net, what happened then? It's just dropped, is it? Has everyone back to work or something? I must be boring today. Bloody neck. Anyway, so I'm looking at this bit and I'm just going to add them in. Um, and I'm just going to be quick. And if you want to just follow the shapes I'm doing, that will make you don't have to do your own. You can just follow mine. So I'm just doing the main shapes. This is if if you're a bit unsure about what's doing what and where. This is this bit and then this big. I think I need to make it a little bit bigger. So I think that needs to be a bit bigger. So I'm just going to smudge it over a bit with my pen. Okay, so the first one is I'm going to put this one in and it's going like that. I'm just going to be very careful where the uh, marks are. All oh, right, my internet. It says it's fine here. It's a little bit right so it looks a bit strange like that I do know but once I start to put the patterns back in um, I'm just going to put in go with it and see how I enjoy just doing it free and straight from the pen. Now, if you are comfortable doing it, please try this. Please just try going for it because it's so it's so refreshing, right, that you don't have to use your pencil first. There's nothing wrong with using your pencil first, but sometimes it, it's overpowering because you think everything you've got to do so many stages. You don't. If you're confident to do it, do it freehand. Okie dokie. Glad that's working out, Rizwana. I'm really glad it's working out for you. I knew you'd be good. So here it's three lines, uh, three circles, a line two massive circles don't forget you've got artistic temper uh, artistic license so you can do what you're blooming want you don't have to sort of follow my lead 
you can add your own bits you can pretend that you can see more like i'm doing here it's not in there but it's got a bit of a gap here so i thought i'd shove that in now i love that because it's got so little pattern nice colors can happen so there's another one done blimey neck we're on fire And this is how when you do a big canvas and you want to do a big sort of abstract piece on a canvas this is perfect for it because you can do um all sorts of um abstraction from your work and then you really feel comfortable because you already like them well i'm very concerned because my internet's exactly Shogun, yeah, very relaxing. So I've got two quite different patterns. Maybe, what time is it? Maybe if I do some patterns on these and then colour, I think that'd be a good idea. So what we've done is we've broke it down into two areas from two, you know different pieces of work where we've got two very distinct patterns. Um, and then what we can do is cut these down even further. If I wanted to abstract that. I'd look at that part and make that huge. So we're having a few issues. I'm going to get straight onto painting. Now I've got all sorts of paints, colours, everything that a painter could want. <laughs> but we all like more paint and more paint and more paint and more paint. So you know, to me, you never have enough paint ever. Look. It gets a bit ridiculous at one point that you've got that much many you you're like oh I can't have any more colours but you do you do you find a bit so I've got the Paul Rubens out I've got my uh, special work colours out today shades of nature vibrant muted all sorts of colours. Um, you don't want to see over there. Well, maybe you do. There you go. That's me, that's, that's me paint pit. <laughs> I love the I love the abstracts. I love them because nobody's telling me what to do, how to do it. Right, these are, are swines like this. So if you do get paints like this don't worry um leave them with the lid off dry them the only problem with these these are my uh van gogh ones uh they all look like black gray and green they're not um my advice is don't put anything on there unless it's plastic um oh that's nothing that kim believe you me that is nothing i have got a big box down here and two uh filing cabinets so you can see it's a bit of a bad disease good though it's better than the other rabbits i had <laughs> right next thing is wake up your paints wake them up i'm going to use these here i'm going to where's me where's my favorite one gone come on Come on, come on, where are you, where are you, it's me, aha, ha ha, right, Turn that out, getting my pink back in there because it used it all up, my favourite pink, permanent rolls and opera rolls, different sizes have them, look at that, that's opera rolls, so expensive, that's permanent rolls, so, that's I think that's about six quid for that little bit but I'm very careful with that very very careful I don't like using it too much which is sad um, there's no way I can use it in there I'll leave it out for a minute I'll put it in the lid on here but I don't want to wash it in so I'll go with that so the first thing I'm going to do is we went with monotone colours yesterday I'm not too bothered today I'm just going to go for it because I want some nice colour so these brushes I'm using are the silver series the SAA I'm going to go with bright colours so I've put a bed of blue down here 
I'm going to take it over some of these and then I'm going to draw it over the top so what I'm going to do is instead of what I normally do which is put the pattern on first I'm going to use the white gold silver whatever pens you've got your jelly rolls um, to bring the color in later because you don't just have to do a pattern with pens um, as in drawing pens patterns can go on with gel pens or anything all depends if you're going to use water over them remember has to be if you're going to do that then your best bet is to use the pens that are water um, reactive last when you're not using any more water so I've done that which looks well dodgy but let it dry let it dry um, if you want to create more of a mute then just get a tiny bit of a I feel chilled already tiny bit of this and just fold it over till you get this and then just dab it out and then that way what's happening is you've not got any hard edges and then because it's absorbent and soft the colour will fade back in and you can also use that to colour other things as well if you wish. Remember always clean dry brush, semi dry. Now I'm going to go on my permanent roll which is just amazing and I'm just going to go I'm leaving this white. One of the things you can do when you're doing this which I haven't done and I should do really is use my masking fluid on it and then when as you're masking it you've got the nice white of the paper showing so look at the grain in this paper coming up beautiful I love it and this is not watercolor paper this is mixed media paper and um, so test all your papers first get your feel of your, oh look at that that's called granulation there can you see it but it's it no Technically, it is and it isn't. But there's some paints by. Um, oh my goodness me, is it? Is it Daniel Smith? And I want them. I really want them. They're granulating, super granulating paints. And you get an amazing effect. Right, so I've done quite heavy, which I'm really enjoying because I've been quite light at the recently. And I'm going to go to a burnt orange. So if you haven't got a burnt orange, it's really easy to, to use. You just get your orange on. I'll do it on here, but mainly I'll do it in the palette first. So you put a little bit of with your pink. And what it does is it really warms it up. But not at the moment, it looks naff. Because do you remember... When we're doing all these works, we're doing it as a blend and layers. So the first layer always looks pretty. It's a bit like when you're putting your emulsion on. It looks very patchy, doesn't it? Clean and dry your brush. Leave it. Don't try to get a full coat the first time you use it. Because if you do that, oh, what's that green? Oh, I'm using that one then. If you try using, oh, look at that. I don't think this is a green. I think this is a, a brown. It's like a sepia. So you've got a dark base. So if you go back in with your water, bear in mind that when every time you touch this while it's wet, keep your finger on the, the bit that's got no paint on it because otherwise you're going to get a paint fingerprint and you don't want that. It does look good though sometimes, I think fingerprint but so I'm just going to clean out what's in there because I'm a bit intrigued I think oh yeah I knew there's a bit of orange in it so it's a very light colour I don't have to use browns but I'm getting more and more into them into the vintage feel so I have got a little bit more brown here and this is a uh, quinacridone so and this is a a warmer brown which I'm just putting in here it's way too much like that way too much for me anyway for what I want so I'm just going to get my mop brush or my all-rounder as this is you could use your mop brushes blend it out 
And this is the way you get your work to look three dimensional. You start to make decisions about where you want the light and dark. Now, if you do, if it does go a bit pear shaped, you think, oh, it shouldn't be on that side. Nothing to stop you making the other side dark so that it goes light in the middle. Does that make sense? So, got this here. I'm wanted to, and because it's out of a pan, a tube, sorry, it's still quite heavy and thick. So, you don't need a lot. I'm quite happy with that. Just around there, leave it to dry. Put a little bit around here and blend out because what you're doing then is you sort of, you'll see what I mean. See, see there, there's a distinct line now. I'm wiggling my brush and I'm just, you see? Can you see the difference? Sorry, my, my uh, camera's only angled and focused for uh, 150. So when I bring it near, it does look a bit peaked on. So I'm getting some more yellow orange sorry yellow yep. again keep your finger on a, a dry bit and bring your orange to your red that way there we go so we've got this light orange coming in from the side and this warmth here so the way to bring that into that is just here not a lot, you don't want a lot because you don't want to change this colour. And this is about colour harmony, the new the new thing I'm doing, right? Oh, the big canvas is coming up soon. We're trying to get everybody to get Skype. There's not many people on it, I do realise, because a lot of people have gone for the other ones, but it's £25 for all day, but it's a 30 by 30 canvas, and we're going to be doing a full Moodle painting one step by step together in the group um, so you'll be able to interact with me and me with you which I'm really looking forward to I just think that this blue may be the wrong blue I was picking that blue and I really think that the aquamarine blue yeah is a better blue I'm just adding a tiny bit more there not too much Yeah, so it's darker here. Clean your brush again. I've got a tiny bit of grey there, which may be too much, but no, it's not too much actually. There you go. Just a tiny bit. So the next thing is we've got all these colours. We want to try and mix some sort of um, togetherness with it all because we've got a bright blue in with these colours. So we need to think, right, well, we want the background harmonious, but colourful. So I've got an ochre, and rather than a bright yellow, this ochre sort of brings... harmony with it, get there? More harmonious. Um, you can bring some of the yellows in here if you want and I'll just show you um, let me find the colour for you that was the yellow ochre natural um, what's the other one I've got Nico Azo yellow I think that one was Nico Azo yellow that's the colour I've just picked there is Nico Nico Azo yellow Nico Azo yellow you can't want me to see it anyway so that's why it's that colour. Bring a little bit of the orange in and where's it gone? A little bit of the brown. Just to give it a bit of the continuity. Each colour you put on, it needs to take less and less space. So more of the lightest less of the darkest and if you don't like that bit there blend with your expensive tool and then just blend that out if you wish you don't have to that looks a bit square to me so I'm just going to do that to soften it which will be cool because when I do that so next step is what I need to do is bring maybe I think I'll do the other yellow I've got which is an, a proper ochre 
which can be quite quite dark in colour so I'm just going to put quite a heavy band on one side it's almost like to me it looks like underground you know like the earth and underground and things bursting through and all I'm doing now is just introducing some water to that edge to blend it out um, get rid of that line I don't want it see it gets it's actually softer in real life than it looks there so here we can I think what we need to do is just bring in the blue using the different blue slightly it does work and again the same sort of thing clean your brush off excess water off and just allow the blue and if you want to add a little bit more blue drop it in while it's doing this and away you go so we've brought the blue into the back the back into the front so we need to sort of think about maybe um what color would it now i think i think i would go with that blue and i'll show you why just put in a little bit i know the other that that's blue but it's a different sort of blue so I'm just going to add a little bit of the Prussian blue, which is the, the greeny blue. No, 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 let me get this right. The cool blue. Like that. So it's a only just took the edge off it. And then what I'm going to do is add a tiny bit. I've got to put some grey. And I'm just going to take the water off. And bring the grey up. just to give it a bit of shading it also works if you want to put a little bit more down here see the blue acts as a the blue acts as like your, your grounding color or your oops, sorry your it knocks the color back for you so you've got that i like this here i think maybe if we bring in some i like the blue and i think the blue looks good if you just put a line of it there but then we go back in and warm it up with the orange there we go so we, we're segmenting it you can put some more there if you wish um, if you've got any blue that you want to sort of now this isn't the same colour but you're building tone on tone now so it's like similar colour darker shade of it um, and again the darker the colour the less you put on it if you want it to look like that so that's done I'm happy with that one so get me next one well I would if I could find it where have you put it where has it gone where is this? now I'm going to go with totally go for it colours here I'm not worried I'm not even going to look just stick my paintbrush in there I don't know what colour it is oh it's red clean my brush off wet brush take the edge off Now the strength of this red pigment is absolutely, you can tell, so you're going to have to go in with a little bit more pigment and blend it out, otherwise you'll get a, a stripe and I don't want a stripe. So you go in, leave that to dry, I've still got a little bit of a stripe but it's not as bad as I thought. So I'm going to go in with another red now because we seem to have this red and this is a warmer red. So.
sometimes you're better off not even looking at the colours in the sense of messing about with them because otherwise you spend the hours like oh I don't know if I like that oh what about that one and you're like whoa you know stop it you, you're enjoying the moment not not what it's going to look like later you're enjoying how it looks now and making it look like that so we've got this here which is a different sort of red we've got some patches here but I'm quite I'm all right with that because what I can do is just drop some of the more concentrated oh I didn't want that but never mind I'll make a pattern out of it there we go so some of the darker colour there okay so the next one is I want to bring in some more red but we're going to go with a different red this time and this is a, a cooler red this is more what we call a crimson And then clean, well, clean this brush. <laughs> okay, so we've got another red, um, and now we're going to go into maybe a magenta and see how that fits. This is a very blue red, so you can just see the difference. So I'm going to come back into here and just in here. We'll have to get set for the show now they've changed my shows around so the one I was doing on Saturday I'm doing tomorrow morning at nine because of the shipping stuff so I've got to spend the rest of the afternoon getting that done I did have some done but it's uh, the stuff that I haven't got what's on the show so I'll have to change it so I'm just going to put in it a shade of colour away so it's away from the actual red so that I've got a nice blend get me so I'll clean the brush let it blend so it's the opposite might need a little bit more on there but that's cool let it dry let it change its shapes of colour let it do that so now we're looking at the red now we've got a pink here that I could put in the pink could work quite well because it's it's a red pink a little bit of orange in there which is quite nice actually so I'll put the pink in I've blended that in there but it won't matter because I'm going to go over it in a minute so I've got that pink so what I might do is introduce like a mauve which is um, which is a blue and a red but more red than blue so There's another one I've got, it's called Purple Lake and that I think that's a, I can't remember off my head but off the top of my head I think it's bluer. So, so we've got that now, so we've got the blues, uh, the yellows and well, dark oranges and reds so to speak. So we can add a little bit more intense colour, now it's dried at the edges where we want it. Then. blend with the brush I look at the colour here and I think which would work better with that and I think personally the purple light to dark would look very good oh sorry mauve mauve whatever you want to call it 
there we go so they bring in the colours again I think the burnt orange look particular good there so we've got that wonderful pattern and form and I love that I love that I love both of them I've got a lot of colour happening there which could sort of it, it can overpower you slightly but don't be frightened, don't be frightened of colour because it's just it's such a nice thing and if you go over some, don't worry if you're quick enough you can just wipe it off if not, just get a little bit of water on it and blend, blend it in if they bleed, they bleed, who cares? I'm not I'm not the colour police, I'm not gonna come round and shout at you for it. So pink in there, then we've got the let me get this right now. It's that one, that one. It's this one. And again adding that extra colour on the top of it whilst it's wet means that it, it you can't get this depth of colour. When it's dry, you can, because you're building on top, you're not mixing in. So I'm just going to get the mold here, put maybe a drop. See, and purple and yellow go brilliant together. Especially a mustard colour, mustard and purple go. Just get a little bit more mustard. I think I might need a little bit more of the pink to just I'm gonna drop in that's better see it's I've got a distinct magenta now and then here we've got our light so I'm gonna go back in with that and just put a bit more red in So we've got two distinctly different abstractions from our work today. Um, it looks different in the sense that colour, harmonious colours, these all work together. These are, these are for impact, these are for harmony. There's a difference in them. And once you can start to see like, oh, get it now. Yeah, get that. Once you add pattern to these, they, they change again. Um, if it's still too wet it will look a bit rubbish -y. so you make sure they're dry there's no prize for being first or ruining your pens so all I'm doing now is carefully and slowly outlining these little bobbles and these are the ones that I put in with a black pen the number two uh, different sizes I've left enough room that I can go inside the, the little white balls and apart from these small ones and add a black outline I've also going to pick out a few and put some dots okay so I've done the dots can you see so the next thing is I'm just going to outline one side and it's the opposite side of that like that okay here I'm just going to do a staggered stitch different shapes and then I'm just going to do They're not very visible, but I don't mind because it's like they're coming out of the ground, so. Like that. And then I'll do.
So I'm just putting dots here. And these dots are um, so three there. And what I'm doing is one in between, so one there, one there. Like that. So you've got like a little pattern form in there. I'm not doing them as many, I'm just going to do bigger ones. So you do three. Sort of counteract that side there. I quite like that. So now I'm going to go and get my pen while it's still. Um, And I'm just going to go in with a number two inside. And I'll just show you. I'll pick it up in a minute and just where I've gone the smaller ones, I've gone outside and the inside on the bigger ones. I'll show you what I mean. Get it? So the bigger ones, I've got a circle inside. Um, the the signal unis um, after a certain time they they are difficult to use, but it all depends as well on the paint. If it's not dry enough, it will stagger. It will just come out in spurts and blitz and blobs. So my advice is, if it's not right, leave it to dry, and then get a little bit of emery board on the tip, and then just see if that helps. So here. I'm just putting the circles round here as a bit of a outline and then dropping these in as well so it's more impact this way because even though it's a, a blue and a darker colour the white has faded a little bit into it so you need something to pick it out a bit more like that and again on this side and this reminds me of Broderie Anglais Broderie, I can't see it, Broderie Anglais See, you've got white on the pen so it's not dry. That's one of the things that stops it. So just to counteract this wibbly line that's in here, I'm just going to put just show you when I've done it. I'm drawing lines because the lines have come in. See, uh, what I do is the um, when I draw, I do all the dots. So I've got all the dots in it now, just to give it a little bit of a. You can't see it very well. Sorry, you can see it if you just do. Like that, I hope you can see that. Okay, so I've got like looks like shaving stubble. So sometimes you don't need a lot, you don't need a lot of pattern, and you think, no, actually, that's enough for me now um, anymore, and it starts to look too much. Or you might say, actually, I want more pattern, and that's that's just, just as everything's valid because it's your work it doesn't matter you're going to be right so i've just put some dots in there and they clip still wet so let me just check this out to get a that's better so all i've done is i've gone around both outlines the original the paintwork and the white pen and then i've got a nice so I'm just going to put in just some smaller ones so that the black sort of beds in with the 
like that. So I've got black, white ones there. This one here, I'm just going to go around. You can use all sorts of pens with these. I mean, I've got, um, you know, if you wanted to do something like a little bit more ornate in some of these. Not, I wouldn't do all of them unless that's your theme. But now and again, I would just pick one or two of them and put a gold pen in them so that you've got like a, yet again a difference um same with these here you could just put just there you can see the gold coming out so it's entirely up to you like that if you can see the gold, yep, yeah, you can see the gold there. So I'm happy with that now because you've got that nice there. Yes, it would. Oh, thank you guys. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, I'm trying to sort of, I know we've got moodling and I know we've got all this, but the important fact is not to just leave it there. You know, it, there's other ways we can deal with work with it and then um, make it ours not just patterns the same thing every day so boring so abstracting it is perfect and if you've got any work that you particularly like then that's a good way of using it isn't it so here i'm using a gold pen no, I can go around it in black or white um, and let it dry. This doesn't seem to be, this is a very juicy pen, so this feels like it's uh, less worrying to put on wet or damp paper. So I tend to not worry too much. Some of them I wouldn't dream of doing it. But when it's wet, this... Um, it does form a puddle it dries flatter but then you can go back in with your pen your black pen or your white pen and put like little dots on it like inside there so on that side i'm going there on this side i could come here well that's nice so almost we're getting almost this idea of a what's it called a steampunky idea get it but it's quite subtle because you're using a silver uh, gold pen so here we're just going to put a not many and because this is dark the gold will show up better can you see so i've got that there i'm going to see if my white will work may not it may and I'm just going to put in here, oh, I don't know, some wibbly lines. I like that better. So we've got that. And then what I can do is bring attention to the bringing attention to the circles I'm not too worried about not having a perfect here but I do like my little three bubbles and dots and and I'm just putting them willy nilly like that You can add some little dots to them as well, like little. So that's what that is. And just here, what I'll do is a. A dot in the circle in the middle, and then you can do it whatever you want. So you could do.
you're actually doing what you did each side but you're doing it in the middle now and then here tell you what I'm watching at the moment a rerun well I say that very loosely because the only time I watch it is just before I go to bed um, a rerun of Bones I love it she's incredibly gorgeous the girl Emily Deshawn the Chanel or something very very pretty right so here I've got some white bubbles maybe some more here would look good don't want them all over go ball mad right so you get the idea it's fun it's en interesting it's entertaining it's pretty it's so relaxing it's untrue um i've got lots of work to do i am going to go into my room for 10 minutes but i've got to sort out some internet stuff for some people with the classes but i am going to go into my room in ju uh, journals please you don't have to invite me i know where it is um i get lots of people ringing and then it's like difficult because i don't want to join right at that moment <laughs> it's like they think i'm forgetting where I am. I probably do actually. Right, so I've got these two. Um, I'll join you tomorrow. I'm on at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, I've read art books as well. Uh, yeah, so tomorrow I'll be back on. I've got a show at nine o'clock with some products from oakwood archer which will be good because it's like fabrics fannons all those sort of stuff that we sold many years ago now a couple of years ago and it's mixed media fabrics we've got some lace on it we've got some feathers so all the things that you know you can think about so anyway i'm going to love you Olivia. i'm going over to my room now not bad an hour and 20 minutes um if you would like to come and join us on the website it's lou withers dot wixsite.com I think whatever it is so I'll see you tomorrow bye